So the Soviet threat is building in the German front. They're starting to line up uh, a few of the Axis supporters. But I don't know if there's actually going to be a direct war between the Soviets and the Nazis. I mean, I'm pretty sure there will be. I don't think that you can just go to war with a faction without calling in everybody else from the faction. But, uh, but we'll see. I, I don't. I'm not sure. I mean, we're, we're seeing the kind of uh, the building of, of troops along the both the Hungarian and Romanian borders, uh, as well as the Lithuanian one is huge. They have all of Lithuania pretty much surrounded, and Germany's not ready for this. At all. If we go to Germany and check on what they're doing, this is actually Poland. There we go. If we go to Germany. Actually, you know what? Germany is is kind. Of, oh, this is Romania lining the German borders, which is interesting. They're not even really lining their own borders. So there's divisions all along here. Oh my goodness. This yeah. This is uh. This is gonna make things interesting. Uh, let's go back and see what what Greece is doing. Still no results, uh, but there are battles going on in... Oh, okay, so Greece is planning to attack the southern part of the Italian peninsula. Soviet Union has declared war in Germany. There it is. Bam. All right. So, is Germany ready for this? That's the next question. Are they completely ready? Also, this really is going to hurt Germany because there is no strong Japan. China's here, but there's no strong Japan at the moment. Um... Without a strong Japan that has a bunch of this, you know, kind of under their control, the Soviets will be only really facing one front, which is entirely a possibility. Let's go ahead and speed up here and see what happens. So we already saw Romania. Let's see what the let's see what this is looking like. So the Soviets at war with everybody. Yeah. So the, the Soviets are at war with everybody from Europe, all of the Balkan states. Uh, we've got we've got even at war with Spain, Italy as well. Uh, yeah, so this is this is interesting. This is gonna be uh, a pretty obviously huge battle, and here it begins. So Germany, I don't think was really prepared for this for the most part. And the thing is, I think what's what's almost as more threatening is actually the Greece, the Greek and and British forces that are in Greek territory and UK territory. That's that's the bigger issue I think because they're gonna launch some sort of naval invasion. Soviet Union's calling in some of their allies, uh, part of their own faction as well. Uh, is uh, is Yugoslavia involved just yet? They are not technically still. Yeah, so Greece is is not still able to get which which again I think might be a good thing. It could be a good thing, possibly either way. Here goes Mongolia. Okay, so what's going on along this front? How is this looking? What's going on here? So here come the Soviets. This is going to be a huge front for, you know, the Axis powers to take care of. Massive, massive front for... Oh, and Lithuania has almost completely fallen uh, already. Divisions kind of rising up out of all parts of Germany at this point. Which they need to be careful, because they're opening themselves up to possibly a D-Day attack from the British. Yeah, so nothing yet. There's... There's no, no sort of invasion plans, I don't think, just yet. We... We're seeing the UK kind of express some interest going through national Spain and then uh, cutting off Italy. Siamese Empire has joined the Axis. All right. So uh, Siam here. Uh, do they have? Oh, they're 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 gonna have to go fight the British forces, aren't they? Well, they've only well they're not called into the war exactly. Uh, they probably will at some point. But Siam would have to face British Raj, I believe, is if that's how you pronounce it. Which, yeah, would make things very difficult because you got the UK here uh, with former French territory under their control. Poor Japan. I cannot believe that. So did casualties, like, radically shift? So now there's a third war, the Soviet-German war. Uh, no, casualties are actually starting to shift back towards Japan's favor. There's still 100,000 less Japanese dead than there are Chinese at this point. Also, People, People's Republic of China also lost all, all, close to... 64,000 troops as well. Okay, so let's go back here. And so this is the big, big battle. This front is going to be very, very important to watch over. Lithuania is uh, is already not doing too well. Also, focus plan for Germany. Yeah, there it is. They're going after that pact now. I'm not sure if they were before, before this war. Actually, you know, more than likely they were. They probably were focusing down this tree before anti-soviet pack what is this going to do 
um, sends offer to all members of the anti uh, common turn pack to join a defensive alliance. Ah, uh, so that's how they can probably get this, the Japanese to join in. How are the Chinese feeling towards now? That would be really interesting if the Chinese decided to join against the Soviets. How possible is that? China is. No, I mean, there's no relationship directly between China and the Soviets. So that's entirely possible, I think. We can look at their relationship here. Oh. Oh, that's uh, that that's me looking. Okay, so I have to go to China themselves. And then look like this. Okay, so this is normal. A negative 10 opinion from both sides is completely normal. And the Japanese are, is going to be, I think, obviously, much much more drastic Japanese with negative 65 Soviets only negative uh, 20 but but still I mean that's that's not good that's still pretty pretty bad uh, okay so the Soviet Union wait wait why are they why are they showing plans here Soviet Union have no nothing on Greece I don't think there's, there's, there should be nothing in Greek territory so I don't know why we've seen a, a line unless we are I'm actually not sure Let's go, let's go back to the Germans. So the Germans plan to obviously take Moscow. And we've talked about this in the very beginning part of this campaign. They take Moscow and, uh, and it's over. I, I, I don't see the Soviet. The Soviets will probably collapse. Ooh, Romania is having a pretty good time on this front here. It's looking like this front is, is okay. Not too many battles, though. Here's a big battle. Let's go ahead and check on the, uh, the combat window. So the Soviets have enemy uh, air superiority. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The, yeah, the Soviets have air superiority at this point. Division level is about the same. Piercing uh, suffers. Oh, that battle is over. 70, 77, 70, 77, 71. Here's about a small, two, two small battles that they're losing. It, I'm looking, it's looking like most of the uh, Axis powers are winning most of these things. As of now, as of now. But this is without any, this is without the British. Now, the next question is, what will the British decide to do? Because if the British don't have some sort of plan here, uh, I think that it's only a matter of time before the Soviets do fall. I think, I think. I mean, we'll, we'll have to see. This is going to take some time for, you know, lost territory. War with the USSR. anti common turn pack. Okay, so uh, what, what, let me check what they're going after now. Okay, air innovations. And United States, you stayed very quiet. You know, we're still about a year away from when you actually joined in, right? It was 1941, I think. Uh, so we don't necessarily know Caribbean sphere. They're trying to uh, kind of unite the Caribbean political power, things like that. Uh, that's one things will get interesting is uh, what will things like, you know, Brazil, Brazil do? Venezuela has a good... Oh, is Venezuela part of the... No. This early? Well, we already have... Well, the, the Allies already have territory here. Uh, but Venezuela is is definitely a sympathizer. Sympathizing with uh, the Germans at the moment. Interesting. They're, but they're being guaranteed by the U.S. Uh, so obviously that's going to complicate some things. Ooh, Italy actually making some gains here. Some pretty big gains. How's this working out for them? Oh, this is still the British. So I don't like that, right now, at this point, I don't like that the fact that, like, if I click on a territory, it matters, like, who technically controls that territory. I feel like whoever, if I click on a on a province or a state, it should be at that moment who controls it, not, not who has, like, the actual control outside of the war. Because that keeps happening, and it's, and it gets, it's, it's not, it's not good. It's not good. Japanese-Chinese war. This is pretty much top. Oh my gosh, there's even more Chinese people that are dying, though. I will say that. But the divisions still very heavily favor the Chinese. Yeah, hugely. But yeah, a lot of Chinese deaths. Over a 100,000 British soldiers here are dead. Oh, you know what? I need to check because we talked about this uh, when the Germans go to war with the Soviets. Manpower. So manpower, they're at 2.23 million army air and navy uh total manpower recruitable 
5.7. They've got civilians. They've got another 200,000 in civilians. It looks like recruitable soldiers in this country uh, enact stricter uh, cons conscription laws to increase. Yeah, so they can go into their like policy, their diplomatic um, here laws, governments, research, production. One of these will can offer them more civilian uh, recruits. I don't know if they're gonna they're gonna choose to go that route though. Soviets have a very interesting strategy where they don't really want to go too far into German territory. They want to take some of the Polish territory away, uh, but actually move up through the Balkan region, cutting off Germany that way. So I don't think they even want to make, they probably don't really want to make too many gains at all here. They just want to get along this river, stop there, and then hopefully push further in the south. That's what it's looking like. But that would mean that they would have probably way more divisions down south. But they're losing. They're losing a lot of these battles. To Romania and Hungary. Uh, and they're even losing a lot of battles to the Nazis here as well. So how far is Moscow? Well, okay, Moscow's still quite far away. We have to look for big cities. Big cities is what's going to get uh, a lot of... Pretty much war score. No, technically it's not called war score. Oh, Lithuania kind of revived. Kind of becoming more and more revived. Out of the dead. Oh my gosh, the Soviets with 5.64 manpower. Uh, oh, are you back at war with... You're not back at war with uh, Finland just yet. But a second Finnish war, it looks like it's going to start up since the Soviets have this border lined up. I, I don't know why, because you're not doing that well in your German front. Uh, Soviet AI, but okay, you can you can choose to do that if you want to. That's totally up to you. Ooh, British have landed a few forces here. So the British did get, get they did get kicked out of Gibraltar, uh, and Italy is not really prepared for this landing in North Africa. Uh, they are winning a few battles in the Sahara Desert. Yeah, they have won a few so far. Interesting. Also, Siam, have you chosen to do anything? No, but uh, the UK do have plans to invade the Siamese Empire if they do decide to actually take up the, the arms, which I think they will at some point. Okay, yeah, so the Korean Peninsula has been completely controlled by the Chinese. Uh, again, I gotta click on Japan. There we go. Whoa! Battle after battle being won by the, by the Japanese now. Every single conflict that I'm seeing is uh they're they're currently winning I and mean, these are not I'm, i should specify these are not necessarily like the battles are being won they're just saying that they're currently winning and then there's kind of like you know the yellow which is like kind of up up for grabs and then small red numbers is not it's, not it's nothing to be too concerned with really not going to be that much of a difference where is so where's the uh, chinese capital nanjing nanjing something like that and actually very close to getting that. 20 victory uh, points. China's at only, again, still a 70 national unity still. If you look at the Japanese-Chinese war screen, or war window, almost half a million, getting, approaching half a million Chinese soldiers uh, dying. And they have 160 divisions. Still more, but, you know, logistics is where it's at. I mean, let's look at, so who are we viewing as? We're viewing as China. They're, they're lacking, obviously, infantry equipment, but it's not terrible. It's not terrible. Now, what's going to stop the Japanese is uh, resources. So, supply. Their supply line. Oh, but they have they have the infrastructure built. I don't know if they're fixing the infrastructure that they already have. They might be fixing... Because, you know, when you, when you go after states and you attack countries like this, you're going to be damaging the infrastructure. I'm not sure if the AI has chosen to uh, rebuild at all. That's definitely a possibility. Ooh, they're going to try to connect these two fronts. That is a pretty smart move. So even though the Japanese have been kicked out of uh, northeastern China and the Korean Peninsula, oh my gosh, there's a second invasion coming. So I don't know if the Japanese were distracted, if they were upgrading troops, or if they needed reinforcements. I don't know, but now they're starting to go pretty heavy into Chinese lands again. Now, let's go back and check on the German front. Germany obviously making some pretty big gains, I think, here so far. Um, 
Yeah, so this is, this is, well, this is still f formerly Polish territory. Uh, some of it is Soviet territory, though. And how's Lithuania? Lithuania's been cut in half, but they did get their capital back, which is pretty big. And how are the Balkan states holding up? Balkan states still, still holding on. They're still holding on. Still lots of battles that they're winning. What about Greece? What about Greece and the UK? They still plan to invade Italy like this. Um, however, I'm wondering what Italy is doing with their navies. So navies is an interesting thing. It's actually kind of hard. The navies are kind of hard to watch out for uh, in these in these battles because they're kind of all over the place. And they're not always... Let's see here. They're not always patrolling... If I go to the naval map mode... Uh, wait, where are your fleets at? What the heck? I see nothing in terms of fleets here. Japan joined the Axis. All right. So, uh, there you go. We've got the Japanese now joining. So far, playing out pretty similar to history for the most part. Uh, and bam, Japan. Oh, so the problem with this is that the Japanese are still fighting the Chinese. And now, you're going to be fighting the Soviet Union and the British. And you still don't have the Chinese war locked down. And there's going to be this whole other front that you're going to have to protect against. Dang it. There we go. Uh, so, wait a second. Is Japan, like, leaving this area? Or... Oh, that's... I think I have the wrong map mode up. Do I have the wrong... Yeah. Am I still... I should be checking... Where are your troops at? Where, where are the troops at? What you doing, man? I don't see where they're at. Let me check the British. British more worried about Siam. Oh, our request for military access has been accepted by China. So UK just got military access through Chinese lands. Interesting. So there's no, there's not an, a, a super immediate border now. The Japanese don't have some immediate border with the Soviets at this point. So we might not see too much damage. The Soviets might not do too much damage to the Chinese. I'm sorry, to the Japanese. Crack Lord needs to make an experience. Uh, uh, needs to make an, uh, an appearance. Uh, an appearance? There you go. He needs to make an appearance in every single video. You have no idea. I'm pretty sure he does. In every single video, he has to make an appearance. So how are these, how are these battles going so far? Still very, very well. Run speed three, so they're not like just cutting through the Soviet Union territory just yet. But the plan is to take Moscow. Is there any like defining Soviet German war is still at zero? So still nothing too big. Um, in terms of cities, there's a pretty obviously Stalingrad. How many points? Stalingrad worth 30. Wow. Yeah, 30 points for Stalingrad and uh, Leningrad up here, right? Leningrad up here, how much? How many points would that be worth? About 30. So technically, you could just take those two. You don't even have to take Moscow, technically. But uh, yeah, but anyways, we'll see. Anyways, guys, I'll stop right there. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.